Anthony from Learning to Play the Guitar. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play the Powderfinger song, Baby, I've Got You on My Mind. The intro for the song just uses one chord, which is a B flat power chord, which is fret 6, 8, 8. So you can either play it with a flat third finger or you can do another version with a little finger tucked in underneath. Either way is fine. So for the chord we have five strums and then we slide down with this rhythm. And that repeats four times, so once or twice more. The whole song is actually based around these sort of power chord shapes and the main thing with these power chords is to watch out for muting of the other strings so making sure we're not hitting or strumming excess strings so we'd end up with something messy like that sort of stuff so I'm actually leaning over and muting the bottom strings with the edge of this finger in this case or if I use the little finger it'll be probably a combination of this first finger muting and the little finger muting underneath, so it helps to control the sound, otherwise we end up with a bar chord or something different sounding, which is not what we want here. It's more of this power chord rock stuff here. For the verse, we've got three chords, all power chords again. We've got a B flat five or B flat power chord at fret six. Second chord's A flat at fret four. Same shape, just slide it down. So your first finger's on fret four. And the third chord is E flat, which is back to fret six, but we've gone down a string. So the bass note is now this E flat on fret six of the A string. And in this case, we're obviously aiming to hit this. Uh, a string, D string, G string. So A, D, G strings. So we strum through like that. And when I'm playing the E flat power chord, I want to not hit the E string on top. And to help prevent that ringing out, I will actually mute my uh, the E string with the tip of my first finger here. So if I get really close, you can see I'm just touching the edge of that top string there. So it's muted, so it doesn't ring out with this sort of horrible, ugly, clashing note there. So I've got a little mute. So if I do hit it, you don't actually hear that string. So then the rhythm behind these three chords for the verse, which is sort of the majority of the song really, and they also use this at the end for the big jam out section, is... Slide the A flat. Just three, and I go to the E flat, and I'm going to go up, down, down, down. So again. So fairly simple. Then we jump to the chorus, which has sort of three parts to it. The first bit is based around the idea of an A flat power chord. So now we're back to that chord we had before on fret four, jumping to a B flat power chord, and we're going backwards and forwards with this syncopated rhythm on the off beats, um, sort of changing around as it goes. So the sound of this would be that sort of thing, sliding backwards and forwards between those two chords. And then we also have an E flat chord jumping back down again. So that, so this little pattern happens twice. It sounds like this. second part of the chorus is a similar idea but we're going to move it between D flat so down a string D flat on fret 4 now same power chord shapes back chord D flat to the E flat power chord backwards and forwards same basic rhythm one more So there's two of those again, and as I'm sliding, of course, I'm muting this E string with the tip of my finger, as I mentioned before, to stop that E string ringing out and clashing with those power chords. Mm -hmm. 
After that, the final piece of the chorus is pretty simple. More power chords. First one is F, a high F as I call it, fret eight, with the bass string on the A string. Again, muting the E string with the tip of my finger. We have this sort of E flat, taking it down. D flat. Low F, which is fret one, bass string on the E string. And that will take you back to another verse. So the second time round, once we do these chords again, this. Jumps back to the E flat on fret six. And this hangs out for four bars. And there's like a little breakdown, which is basically going back to the intro with the building up, uh, with the drum fill that builds up over the intro, which is that. The big drum thing building up as it goes back into the sort of the rock out section on the end, which is basically the verse with some extra layers on it. So the, the notes of this solo were built around the B-flat minor pentatonic scale, which at fret 6 is this pattern. So very rock and roll sound to that. So the first thing we come across is a unison bend, which means we're going to pluck fret 6, my first finger here, on the second string, the B string. Third finger is going to grab a fret 8 on the G string, and we're going to basically pluck these two strings together. But while I do that, I'm going to bend the G string up to match the pitch of the note on the my first finger here on the second string, which is that sound. And so the rhythm for this section has two whole bars of this one unison bend in a sense. We've got three, four. And I'll just down pick that. And then the next bar, he actually releases the bend slightly, so he has what's called a half bend. So the notes are going to clash slightly, but it sort of sounds cool in a rock and roll sort of way. So then the next bar of this bending stuff with the slightly out of tune note. It sounds like that, so that's just a half bend there versus a whole bend, so a bit less bending. Then we have a little lick after the bending unison bend stuff. I'll do it again, which is just spaced around the middle of the pentatonic, B flat minor pentatonic pattern. Eight, six, eight, six, eight, eight. Then we get into the more Chuck Berry type stuff to me. Double stop sixes, a la Johnny Be Good. Uh, so we've got a bar of this, and again, I'm just going to down pick it. So that's one and two and three and four and, which is the top end of the pentatonic pattern here. And so, and then we're going to have a bunch of these. And then that will jump back to another little part. But let's combine those two double stop parts together. So three, four. Then we have a little... That sort of sound. Again, very much in that old school rock and roll. We'll just add more distortion to it. So what have we got? We've got a pair of double sixes. And we've got a double eight bend. Got a half bend up and down, double six, eight, six, eight, bend in the eights, and then just what I call a quarter bend. So just giving it a bit of attitude as we go. Ending on the double six. And that's the whole solo. The final part of On My Mind is just based around the chords from the verse with extra layers of guitar chucked on top going round and round. So then on top of that there is this guitar part using double stops again. So sounds roughly like three, four. So is that going around and round? On the last four rounds of the song, <laughs> there is another little guitar overdub playing a little melody, uh, almost like a 
sort of blues licks, sort of. Anyway, so the little melody is... Going round and round within the mix there. The song ends on a B-flat power chord. That's all you need to know to play this Powder Finger classic. Subscribe to the Learning to Play the Guitar YouTube channel for more lessons. And don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications when I upload a new video. You can also check out my books and more lessons at my website learningtoplaytheguitar.net. Thanks for watching and keep practicing.